Hey guys, Chris here from Boxing Brothers Online Coaching, and today I'm gonna to show you five ways to hold center ring. Okay, so the first tip is gonna be get to the center and be first. As soon as you hear that bell go, nice tight guard, balanced footwork, don't rush to the center, but make your way to the center and assert yourself by being first. Boom, get that jab out. Quickly get that one, two out. Not over committed trying to knock the bloke out, but assert yourself. Show that you're there to fight and try to possess the center as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, you don't want to get to the center as quick as you can and just stand in front of the guy, okay, and then wear, and, and, and wear shots and let him be first. You want to not only get to the center to possess that center ring before he makes his way over to you in your corner, but you also want to get there and assert yourself by throwing your punches and being first. Don't throw over committed shots, just get there, nice tight guard, boom, snap that jab out, okay, and your first movement from that position shouldn't be back but around to the left or right, okay, but moral of the story. First tip, from your corner, bell goes, make your way to the center, tight guard and be first. Okay, so once you've gotten to the center and you've been first and you're not being pushed back and you're holding that center, you're kind of sharing uh, uh, the same amount of real estate in the ring. You're both in the center, no one's really possessing more of the ring than the other. You want to start trying to take half a step forward. Okay, you don't want to make it uh, obvious that you're coming forward. You want to be really inconspicuous with it. So that really tight guard, that chin down, sticking that jab out, being careful, trying to stay at a range of your shots, but you're etching forward ever so slightly. You're etching forward to a degree in which your opponent can't pick up that you're actually coming forward. Really, really subtle steps forward. As soon as you, if you can take those subtle steps forward, you'll find that your opponent will start taking subtle steps back. And that small amount that you're pushing forward with that tight guard is getting that jab out and it will be really incremental. You start possessing more of the center of the ring than they are and hopefully eventually they'll end up on the outskirts. Or if not on the outskirts, at least not in the center, okay? So you've made your way to the center, you've been first, and now you're, you're combating your opponent but you're etching on them. You're just taking that little bit of a step forward. Not so that you're walking onto their shots, so that you're just pushing them out of the center of the ring while you're boxing them. Okay, so now that you're, you're, you've made it to the center, you're pushing them out and you've kind of, you, you got a little bit more of the center, you want to avoid going back unnecessarily. Avoid going back unnecessarily, okay? So oftentimes, you might be coming forward, pressing your opponent, they start picking up the pace and, and the tempo of the fight, throwing harder shots, etc. Yes, there are times where you need to retreat and get out of danger and, and avoid that crossfire, but you don't want to fall into the trap of uh, eating their, their feints. So they might faint something and you go, whoa! You thought it was something more than what it actually is. You end up giving up a large amount of space and then they end up coming forward and taking advantage of that opportunity. Or you might attack them and then they throw a jab out and it's something that you could have worn on the guard or slipped or, or maybe even worn. It wasn't going to, be to do too much damage, but instead you retreated fast and hard and all the way back. Okay. Once you've got the center of the ring and you're pushing forward, you want to be a really hard case to make go back. Once you start coming forward, you want to stay just out of range of their so shots, just off their shots. And if you can avoid it, don't take big leaps back. Don't rush back. If you need to step back, try to step back with that tight guard, wear those shots, and then go back to coming forward. So avoid going back unnecessarily. And with experience, you'll be able to determine when that is. Okay, and the next one is to make them move back. The only reason why your opponent is going to move backwards is first, if you're moving forward, and Second, if you're giving them a reason to go back. So incidentally, if you just start moving forward, you'll find your opponent will just move back. Like, unconscious, subconsciously, they'll just start moving back. But if you're moving forward, you're not really giving them anything, you're not being aggressive defensive, they got no reason to move back, okay? So you need to make sure that you're giving them reason to go backwards so that you can hold the center of the ring and have a little bit more control over the fight. So some ways to do this is, first and foremost, the footwork. You've got to be taking that half step forward. Next is your punches to have a little bit of a, a, a traffic going forward, throwing your shots, not frivolously, not overcommitted, but getting your jabs out there. The next one is aggressive defensive, moving your head, shutting that guard, catching their shots on the guard as you're moving forward. Fainting is another one. Insinuate that you're gonna do something that you're not really gonna do, make them go back, give them a little bit of a scare. These kind of things are all gonna make your opponent move back and allow you to move forward and hold the center of the ring. If you're not doing things to make them move back, you're standing in the middle of the ring hoping that they'll just keep moving backwards voluntarily, you're gonna, you're gonna find it really hard to, to have them continuously moving back. Give them a reason to go backwards so that you can keep coming forward and hold the center of the ring. Uh, the last one is to fill the gap. Okay, so let's say for example, you're not holding the center of the ring. Let's say you, you've done everything, you've gone to the center and then they've started coming forward, they're quite an aggressive boxer, etc. 
Okay, now you started looking at ways to try to make them, you know, go backwards so that you can come forward. It's important to fill the gap. So whenever your opponent voluntarily moves backwards, because it happens oftentimes, you might not even do anything, and they've bought into some kind of bait, or they misread what was going on, and they take a big step back. That's all very well that they've taken that step back, or perhaps you've made them go back. But if you're not filling the gap that they've created, then you're never going to repossess the ring. Okay, so oftentimes you'll see boxers circling around the outside, and they'll do something, and their opponent will whoa, go back, and instead of coming forward and using that as an opportunity to kind of peel off the ropes and get, get more into the center, they'll just continue moving around. Once that gap has been open, you need to fill it. If your opponent gives you an inch, you need to take a mile, okay? You need to be filling the gap, and when you do fill that gap, you need to assert yourself. A little bit like what we were talking about in the beginning of, the, of, of number one, assert yourself. Once you fill that gap, you've made your, the opponent's gone back, there's that gap, you fill that gap, boom, boom, get that double jab out or get that single jab out, okay? Especially when they voluntarily decide to move backwards. You might be in front of them, they move back for whatever reason, don't stand there looking at them. As soon as they move back, you move in. Right at the beginning of your boxing journey, uh, when we train people here at the gym, we do an exercise called one leads, one follows, where one person goes back, you partner up, one person goes back, other person comes forward. One person goes back, it's simple ABC boxing. As soon as they start going back, that's your opportunity to start going forward. Always fill that gap. And again, when you do fill that gap, make sure you're not walking onto their shots. You're just off their shots with that nice tight guard and you're pressuring, you're pressuring, you're pressuring. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that it works for you. Remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends. I'll see you next time.